pretty much everything there is to win. It was at Arsenal, we won the um, quadruple there. We were the first English club to win Champions League. And obviously coming to Chelsea, becoming the captain and leading the team to two doubles. And having the opportunity to end my career here and being given the role, yeah, I think for global ambassador for the club. Plan International is a, um, a global children's charity that do a lot of work with inequality and obviously countries that are experiencing poverty. <music> Having the experience obviously to go to Jordan, um, into the refugee camps and seeing how these poor people live and the amount of good work that they've put in there to, to, for the children to have access to, to school facilities and to, to be educated and for us to go out there as Chelsea Football Club to um, go and coach the young kids out there and see the excitement on their faces. A big round of applause for Katie. I obviously had the, the privilege to speak to, to quite a few people in the camp and hearing some of their stories. One of them that got to me was um, one of the teachers actually in the school. She had, I think, that she had three children. When she first set up the teaching that she was doing, they were coming in and drawing pictures of bombs and people with no arms and legs and drawing in quite dark colours which no child should ever have in their imagination to draw a picture like that um, and that was really upsetting for me. All the good work obviously Plan International have done and the charities within there that have helped the children come out of that darkness and into sort of the light and they're using uh, their imagination now for things that they miss from home in Syria. It was really heartbreaking I think to see because they're safe in where, where they are, but it's not really a life for them to live in. I think the one interview I did do with a family where I went into their shelter and we, we had a really heartwarming talk about her trying to cross the border and her 10-year-old son was sitting next to her and as she was telling the story and it was being translated, I could see in the boy's eyes, he was reliving the bombs, the shooting, the, all that sort of stuff of having to try and cross the border with, with his parents. Um, which I think no child should ever be exposed to, any of that sort of stuff. And I think a parent obviously trying to protect their children, trying to come across that border as well, must be... You'd put yourself in front of anything, I think, for your children. And it was... I think I sat there in tears the whole interview. Oh, look at them. What sort of uh, football were you for people who might not have seen you? What would we have expected to see of you on the pitch? Tough tackling, hard working. Um, a lot of people have used the heartbeat of the team, um, lead by example, um, and an absolute winner. I hate losing. Well, it shows. It does show <laughs> in your record. <laughs> what were your highlights uh, playing uh, for your national team? Wearing? I think playing in the uh, in the Euros. Um, I went to my first Euros when I was 17, and gaining yeah 90, I think it's 95 caps. I've got in and around having my three children within that. And I think one of the, my proudest moments, I think, is having my children and then being able to experience my life as a footballer and knowing that mum, yeah, mum plays football. I mean, they've travelled around with me, whether it be club, coming to away games, um, or whether it be yeah, international, coming over to Canada to watch the World Cup. And they've been in and around and experienced my career. So mum playing football is normal, or females and girls playing football to my three boys is normal, which is great going forward. I can't dip out of football straight away either. I think um, I'm still around at training when I get called in. When they need an extra body, I'm like, yep, I'm available to come and train, um, which is nice to still be around the girls. And I speak to a lot of the girls and, and hopefully I am still a big influence in, in their career and their playing career. So, What was it like to be the first Chelsea uh, female ambassador? I think for me, it's an honour. Um, I love Chelsea Football Club. Um, I've had a great five years here playing. And I think to be asked, yeah, to become the first female global ambassador for the club, was yeah a massive honour for me and yeah I think a big club like Chelsea and and big football clubs should be working alongside charities to, to raise money for the for these poor people um, because I think until I went out there I think everyone has a perception of what they think a refugee is or what they're after and what what they're doing but I think until you go out there and experience 
that. I mean, I, definitely my perception has changed. I, I, it was heartbreaking, and it's taught me as well about my life and my, how I raise my children and some of the things that I think, God, are tough in my life. To look at them and think, I don't live in that, and actually my kids are actually really, really spoiled. Yes. I feel like a little girl again. So it gave me that realisation of my own life too, and. I mean, some of the stuff and their imagination of the stuff they made, they were making dresses and pictures and anything they could make. And I think it was amazing. I think they sent me home as well with a teddy bear that they'd made, um, which was a real personal touch, I think, for me, and a scarf, a Chelsea scarf that they actually crocheted and put Chelsea on it. And I was amazed. The joy of, of coming and playing football, I think, for them was was good. I mean, we tra we trained all different age groups. Um, I think it was from maybe six to like eighteen year olds, yeah. boys and girls. Um, we had sort of free sessions in the morning for the boys, different age groups, and then the girls in the afternoon. I must say, the girls uh, were I was quite surprised. Um, they were so tough, and they come in and they got stuck in, and there were some really good players there. And I think even that the the, uh, the women wanted to join in. Um, and it was really surprising to, to see that. And, and the girls also brought the atmosphere to the camp. They brought the drum on the sideline. And, and when the girls were, we were coaching the girls, there were the other girls on the sideline with the drum and singing. And they brought a real football atmosphere, which was really nice. Come on!